thank the organizer for for this opportunity to talk uh, about approximation and closer fields in some analytic spaces. This work is uh, in collaboration with uh, Omar Salah. So uh, I think uh, everybody here knows uh, the definition of the RD space, the earth in RD SH2. And in the sequel, I will use the following norm. Uh, it is well known that uh, one can uh, define several norms in these spaces. And so we are, uh, I am interested in the following problem. Let X be a Banach algebra in H2, in Hardy space H2, which has the division, division property. The question is describe the clausal ideal of the, the algebra X. And in what follow, I, I will use uh, some notation as like a let uh, E be a not trivial close radius of X. We use theta E for the greatest common divisor of the inner part of no zero functions in E. And E is the zero set of uh, our close radius. I will start the, with the first example, the disk algebra, which is uh, the intersection of the holomorphic function on the init disk and the continuous function on the bar with the following norm, the supreme norm is a uh, commutative algebra. Berlin and Reading gave separately a complete description of clausal ideal of this of the disk algebra by proving that every clausal ideal is generated by the inner part theta e of our radial and the zero set of our radial, which means every clause radial in this algebra can be expressed as follow. The second example is the separated Lipschitz analytic algebra lambda alpha. The definition is given as follow. And in this space, one can define the norm, the following norm, with this norm, our space is a Banach algebra. One can ask the same question, describe the, the clausal ideals of this algebra. Matheson, Matheson in 1977 uh, proved that all clausal ideals of this algebra is our founder in the sense of Berlin reading theory. Next, if we consider the graph of Dirichlet space on this algebra, that means the intersection of the, the both spaces, where the Dirichlet space is defined as follow, the of uh, the all of fun holomorphic function of D, which satisfies this integral is converged. So Brian Buya. He used this equivalent norm on lambda alpha to extend this theorem to this algebra, which means uh, he proved that every clausal ideal, not ideal, ideal of this algebra uh, is under of the uh, 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 in the sense of Berlin reading theorem. This characterizes. This characterization are based on the following approximation theorem. If, uh, if we take uh, our algebra is the Lipschitz analytic algebra, lambda alpha, this result was uh, given by Matisson and the, the second is by Brian Boya, which means every function in this space let f be a function in, in, in this algebra x such that vanish on, uh, on a closed subset E of T, then there exists a sequence for each constant, there exists a sequence Fn, which satisfy the three, the three properties. Fn vanishes on E 
and we have the following counter and the sequence f n f converge to f in x so my first goal in this presentation is to give a simple proof of these results uh, approximation which means this approximation theorem and let's <coughs> let's start by the Lipschitz Lipschitz analytic algebra so I will use the an equivalent norm established by Diakonov using a, an argument given by Diakonov in this uh, paper one can see, one can see that the norm of f alpha is equivalent of these three quantities. Okay. So now let uh, f and g be two outer functions, and we will define the 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 outside outer function, the outer function. Our first result in this direction is this inequality. This the 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 main result of, of in this direction to obtain to extend this theorem for uh, to, to obtain this theorem with a simple proof in lambda alpha so we prove that for every function f in h2 in all this space h2 we have this inequality And this inequality is based on the following inequality of the convexity. So, our, our mean is to construct a sequence which satisfies the three conditions. The first one, the second one, and the third one. Okay. Now, let f be a function in lambda alpha. We start by the, the algebra lambda alpha, which means I will start to prove the results of mathematical results. And so we have these representation, the outer part and the inner, inner part of our function. Theta is the inner part and G is the outer part of our function. We suppose that f is vanishes on E, and we know that the, the algebra lambda alpha possess the division property. This implies directly that the G is an element of lambda alpha. And since G is vanishes on E, because uh, the G is the outer part of, of F and E is a subset of T. Then using this information, and G is an element of lambda alpha, we will prove easily that G, we have the, this contour. Okay, and now we will construct our sequence using the cutoff function, and Fn is equal to this sequence. P is a constant with P is the following transform, two over K. Using a lemma result, one can use a lemma result, one can see that uh, Fn is an element of our algebra lambda alpha. And uh, in addition, we have the, the this control for every uh, element of our sequence. So we have this representation Ffn, the inner part is the same inner part of F, and that is the outer part. It's easy to see that uh, F and convert uniformly to F on any compact subset of D, and by a simple calculation, one can see the one can get the third inequality. So for the second inequality. We will use the previous, the previous theorem. This estimate, this inequality. 
using this inequality, one can obtain directly that the, the difference is, we have the, this contrast. One can summarize this information about our sec sequence. We have three information. The first is FSN converts to S uniformly on compact subset of B. The second, we have this control uniformly with respect to N because we have these controls and F is an element of lambda alpha. And automatically we have these controls. And the third information is using the second inequality to obtain this. By using a Schwarz lemma, one can see that Fn, FFN, this sequence converge to F in lambda alpha. And then we have the we have a pro, we have the result of mutation, the approximation theorem of mutation for the algebra lambda alpha. So now the standard directly states uh, B gamma is defined as follow by using the white directly integral. With gamma, with gamma is between zero and one directly. And by using a green, green formula, one can see, one can get this equality. Where D mu gamma, that is this, this model. So <clears throat> we will consider the algebra, that means we, the trace of D gamma on lambda alpha. And this space is a Banach algebra with respect to this mode. We extend the results of the, the approximation theorem to this algebra for every gamma between zero and one strictly. And we have the same results. That means we, if you have a, a function for every function in this algebra, we have a, a sequence that approximates our function in our algebra. If we say gamma equal to one, B gamma is exactly H2. And we get the Matheson, uh, the, the result of Matheson, because lambda alpha is a subspace of H2. For gamma equal to zero, the situation is quite different because B mu zero is, a, is equal to zero. And we don't have this representation as before. And that is the case of our, we don't have this because the right formula is equal to zero. And so we will come back to this point. First, I will, uh, I will prove the result for gamma between zero. We will use the same sequence as before. And uh, then FFN is the sequence theta, that is the inner part of our function and the cutoff function g and n over p minus one g over p. From the above discussion, we have the, the following control and we will see that uh, these elements is an element of our algebra. So it remains to prove that Fn converge in d gamma to f. And uh, so, We say before that uh, Fn convert to F in lambda alpha. 
and we have this representation for the weights directly integral is in the same result uh, the, our approximate our inequality to prove this this inequality it's uh, it's easy to to check this this inequality this means that uh, our sequence is uniformly bounded and uh, the integral the weight the integral of fn is uniformly bounded and then we can use banachar uh, glue theorem and uh, a classical a classical <coughs> arguments of functional analysis to prove that these sequences check the three information desert the first one and the second one and the third one So we need to prove uh, the question now is uh, our approach is, uh, is can we prove, can we recover the results of Brian Goya with our approach? The, the response is positive and we need two results. The first result is this, this inequality is a result of rector sandberg if we if we take a function and that is the representation the the black product associates of zero sets of the zero of the function f and the singular part and g is the outer part of our function the an element of h2 so g is an outer function in h2 because h2 is a uh, possess the F property, which means one can divide by a non, an inner function. And so we have this inequality. This equality is established by Richter and Sandberg. That is the first one. The second one, we saw with transfer this formula, the Carlson formula. We have the directly integral of F is equal to directly integral of g plus to two quantities so using the same sequence one can see that the directly integral of s s n is is controlled by p over two directly integral of g and this inequality and that is exactly these inequalities, one can recover our, uh, one can recover this inequality within this inequality of rector center. So in such situation, which means that, that we have a sequence that the direct integral of this sequence is uniformly bounded, and we use the same arguments as before, and we have the, the sequence. So that is the, and, the, and as a consequence, we we'll recover the result of Brahim Boya. Now, <coughs> the MZ operator is satisfied some properties on D gamma, the class, the, the standard directly spaces. The first one is bounded and it's, it's it checks the following inequality. And also MZ is a op is an IT can say click on D gamma. So uh, that means we satisfy the both properties. Conversely, let's see be a bounded operator, an IT can say click on a her separable helper space each such that this inequality is satisfied. Aleman proved that there exists a positive superharmonic function omega on B, such that P on H is initially equivalent to MZ on D omega, which means this diagram, this diagram is commutative. P, H, H and MZ
d oméga de d oméga. En dire existe. Unitel, un opérateur unitel. Such that this gradient is commutative. The, the superharmonically white directly spaces, the omega associated with omega, is defined as follows the white directly integral is this quantity. That means all, all function in H2, which satisfy which such that do this integral is converged. This, this space is a Hilbert space with respect to this norm. And besides, if we have a no negative separate harmonic weight on B, using general Ries representation theorem, there exists a positive barrel mother mu on D and a find positive barrel mother mu on T such that we have this representation of our function of our white omega z. And e mu is the grain potential of mu and p mu is the Poisson transform of mu. Okay. And it is now that e mu is no is no equal to infinity and only if this integral is converged and we will in suppose that this condition is satisfied in the second. Now, we, by grain formula, we have this inequality. And this, this is the same, the same quantity that we, we, we saw in the norm of the of lambda alpha and the, D gamma, the standard dedicated space. So we have this equality. We have this representation of our, uh, of the weight directly integral with respect to the uh, superharmonic part of Y, of our weight, and which means we have D mu of F is equal this integral. Using this theorem, using this theorem, one can give the And get this inequality for the if our our weight is purely separate harmonic. And we will use the a result of Richter Sandberg for the harmonic part of our weight, which means that we have this inequality. This inequality is uh, proved by Richter and Sandberg for k equal to one. By induction, one can get this inequality. It's not, uh, it's not difficult, difficult to, to prove this, this inequality. And now, put together this inequality, we have this estimation, this estimation of, this, uh, of the cutoff function at that. So now we have all materials, what we, we need to prove, to extend, the approximation theorem to all separate molecular weight directly spaces, and that is the so let f be a function in this algebra, and the norm in this algebra we will use. Sorry, I forgot the. This space with respect to this, this norm is a Banach algebra. And so <coughs> let F be an element of this space. The same sequence approximates our function 
in this algebra. And that means Fn vanishes on E, and we have the, this control, and Fns converts to F in D omega, and the trace of D omega on lambda. If we, if we take omega is equal to one, one can recover the, the, the result of Brian Boya, and if omega equal, omega equal, one minus model Z over two, D omega is exactly the Hardy space And these results extend the both results of Boya and Matheson to all separate molecular white directly space. So as a, as an application of this theorem, we will uh, prove that every every ideal in this algebra is is standard in the in the sense of the Berlin reading, which means if we are if E is a no trivial closed ideal of our algebra, then we have this is generated by two things. The first thing is the zero set of E and the inner part of, of E. So, uh, thank you for your attention. I will uh, stop there. Thank you, Hafid. Um, we have maybe time for a quick question if anyone has. Um, oh yes, there's, I can read to you. If, can you see the chat, Hafid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a question for you. Yeah, okay. Your restriction, your attention on the subspace of each. Is there a technical reason for what? For the the first uh, uh, the first reason, we need this representation uh, using the Poisson, uh, the, the kernel of Poisson, and we need the, uh, a result of uh, the, the the results that uh, guarantee the existence of the radial. Uh, limit of our function of each our uh, of our function uh, chosen in in our space that is the first one and uh, the second one is the property of the of, of the, divi the division property the f property all right uh thank you very much this was wonderful I will stop the recording. <laughs>